Work on the observatory has reached the place where it's a lot of internal tinkering and fine carpentry at this point, or in this case, cutting silverboard insulation to shape and fitting it into the spaces between the struts. I know, I know, some of you out there are probably thinking, why on earth are you insulating an observatory? Well, it's not actually for insulation purposes. My plan is just to slow down the temperature changes between the outside and the inside when the observatory is closed up to minimize condensation. Here in Nova Scotia, during late spring and early summer, and late summer and early autumn, temperature changes can be rapid and pretty extreme between day and night. And that's when condensation is most likely to happen. So I think by adding a little bit of insulation, I can just slow down that process a bit, which I'm hoping will cut down the buildup of moisture inside the observatory. As the project progresses, I'll add other strategies to manage humidity as well. But this is where it begins. Weather barrier on the outside of the struts, that's that white plastic sheeting Tyvek house wrap. And on the inside, silverboard insulation. At this point, it's mostly all in place. I'm just adding a few corner struts to give places for screws to get purchased when I add the plywood walls in a minute. All right, the silver boards in every nook and cranny. Let's get on to the next part of this project. For the next part of this project, I'm going to add 3 8 inch exterior grade plywood to the inner walls. Exterior, because the walls will have to be able to stand up to some humidity and dew, especially when the observatory is open. At this point, I'm just trimming the sheets to get them ready for three of the walls, which will just basically be big walls. They're simple cuts. More complex cuts will have to happen when I start getting to the door. I find a circular saw is one of the best kind of saws to cut plywood like this. Because they track well, it's easy to follow a straight line. Now we'll just get the other side real quick, and that will be our first wall ready to install into the observatory. I wasn't sure about these cordless power tools when I first started getting them, but I tell you they're worth their weight in gold when you're working away from a power source. I would tend to think they're really worth their weight in gold when you're working near a power source too, because I don't have to worry about cutting the cords or tripping over them or navigating them and maneuvering them around objects. I'll just never go back to corded power tools. Looks like this sheet here worked out well. It's going to fit perfectly into place. Just a matter of lowering it down and screwing it into the struts. We'll start work on the door here. And these are pretty simple cuts, just large plates here and there. But I do have to make a few fine cuts, as in here, to make room for the corners of the door. And this is where a jigsaw really comes in handy. Great for these fine cuts. I know a lot of people don't like jigsaws, but in my opinion, honestly, if you have a miter saw, a circular saw, and a jigsaw, you can build almost anything. I just have to cut the other mark out of there, and if I've made my measurements correctly, this should fit perfectly into the upper corner of the door opening. I have to say, after nearly two months building this observatory, it feels good to finally be bringing the project to an end. I've enjoyed building it, but I'm looking forward a lot more to using it. And I'm also looking forward to not having to wrap the observatory up in a tarp whenever it looks like rain is coming, which is every other night here in Nova Scotia. So. Getting the walls done will allow me to really focus, finally, on the roof. And with the corner piece made, we just need to make a fine cut onto one of the plates to go lower down on the side of the door. That just takes a moment to measure and cut. And then we can get back to the work of installation. I don't know about you, but whenever I work on a carpentry project, it's not till I'm actually installing a piece in place that it really feels like work is done, you know? And with all the plates bolted into place, I'm now working on the last plate in the upper right corner of the door. These last three screws going in are the last three screws that the walls will require. At this point, I can genuinely consider the walls to be finished. I may or may not paint them later on. It depends on if I think they would benefit from the additional moisture protection. Humidity is such a concern in Nova Scotia, not always, but during the height of summer in particular. And keeping water out of wood is always the best way to go. That's it. The very last screw the wall requires. 
With that, the walls have transformed from a series of struts to struts with weather liner and silverboard insulation to this. Something that looks more like the finished wall of an interior structure. And what I like especially about it is it is solid. If you were to grab these walls and shake them, they wouldn't budge a millimeter at this point. And given our powerful winter winds and occasional but not infrequent storms, that's something that was very important to me to create. With this done, it's time to get back to work on the roof. This is the side of the roof that will face the eastern horizon, and I completed building this frame last week. All it needs is for some marine grade plywood to be screwed onto the sides and tops, but before that I'm going to build its mate for the west half of the roof. The split roof is both a complicated yet simple project. Each side consists of only 13 pieces of wood constructed out of only about 4 or 5 2x4s and a single 2x6. But the upper and lower beams require careful angling to 24 degrees. And since I don't have a table saw, that has to be managed with that circular saw. Still, I think I did an okay job of it. Certainly functional. Well, honestly more than functional. It's pretty accurate. And that's because when I cut these angles, I fashioned jigs to hold the circular saw stable out of some scrap wood. All the beams have to be thoroughly fastened and locked rock solid together with metal bracing. And when the plywood is added, we'll get a lot more lateral strength. And when that's all done, I'll add a liquid rubber roof, mount the two roof parts into place, add a cap over the east roof, install internal rails to keep them aligned when they're slid in and out, and a kind of landing pad for the roof halves to sit on when they're pulled out and the observatory is used during the night. It's mostly done with a lot of detail yet to cover. We'll get to that soon. Thanks for watching.